ביאור משנה ה', סו פרק י' משנה ה'. This is a beautiful one. Uh, just the, the introduction to this Mishnah. This Mishnah doesn't make what we just now read. Actually, I can ask a question now, and it's not going to make sense, this whole Mishnah. And the question is going to be, <laughs> what do you mean? He's taking letters in the bag. And Charles. Uh, he should be obligated in taking the bag. What do I care about the letters, forwards and backwards? What's even the question? That's what I started in the beginning. I said, but he can't carry. <laughs> what do you mean? No, in the Talis, he's not carrying. He put it in the style. You said, no, he's not allowed to do it. So how yeah, do yeah do but, it? but the Talis, you're allowed to carry. It's on you as a government. The bag is not on you as a government. It's you said as you put something in your pocket yeah, the, and you're not allowed. The bag, you your pocket, that's what he said in the beginning. There's two have a pocket here and it goes oh, yeah, I, it the said that. He says that. The pocket is the, pocket is the case with the talit. This, the talit is a pocket. Okay. That's the case. But then he went further on. He says if you take a bag and then you put, so that, now we're here, what do you mean you, I take a bag? There's not even, what are you even telling it to me? I'm go- going to be obligated on the fact that I took the bag on Shabbos. Forget the letters on it and it goes back oh, to the forwards. Oh, bag on Shabbos. The bag you're taking. The bag is not a garment. The bag is not a garment. The, the, the thing is, uh, you so... Can. so you, you can. The bag itself already, without oh, anything. That's either. right. <laughs> so that, that, that's what we're going to discuss now. ביאור משנה ה, the explanation of משנה ה. משנתנו דנה בהוצאה שנעשתה על ידי שני אנשים. Our משנה is going to start talking about when you take out an object with two people. Two people are taking out the object. כן באה משנה ללמד, also the משנה comes to teach, שהמוציא שני דברים, that if you take out two things, for example a bag and letters, Previous Mishnah. Okay. שאחד מהם תפל לחברו, that one of them is subservient to the other one. In other words, the mailman is delivering bags or is delivering letters? Letters. So, it, so the, the, the bag is subservient to the letters. אם אין בעיקר כשיעור הוצאה, פטור הוא אף על התפל. Which means if the letter doesn't have two letters, at least two letters or whatever, a letter is minimum requirement, and he's carrying yeah, that, nice. so he's not going to be obligated because there's no measurement on the letter, and because the bag is subservient to the letter, he's not going to be obligated on the bag either. Okay? Mm-hmm. And in the end of the Mishnah, we're going to, we're going to have a disagreement between the sages. Beautiful thing. Taking out a dead person on Shabbat. So it's got three things here. It's Mo- just two it's, people carrying and it's, then... It's got a lot of su- subjects. We'll have to go slowly, slowly through this one. Ve-yesod machlokatam hu, and the, the whole disagreement between Rabbi Shimon and Chachamim, im chayavim al melacha she'ena tzricha legufa. The disagreement is, are you obligated on a work, of doing work, that you don't need it? You remember we, we had this machloket before, with the nail, with the candle. We said if you extinguish the candle on Shabbat and you don't want the, that it's going to be lit um, nicely the second time, are you obligated or not? It's the same yeah. machloket. Yeah. It's melacha shenot tzicha legufa. It's a work that you don't need it. You don't need the darkness. You just want... But what do, don't you need in, for example, in the letters? You, you, you need... The, you have to have the carry and you have to have the letter in there. So we're going to see the example of the letter on. Okay. Yeah, the example is going to be with the dead person. When okay. we get to it, you see. Okay. So let's start. Okay. This is an easy one. We actually don't we know this. The only reason he is saying this is in order to introduce the subject, because later on he says two people who take out the kikar. But this one is already known. Somebody takes bread to the public domain. He took it from the public domain, from the private domain, and he put it in the public domain. Chayav, chayav chatat. He's obligated uh, sin offering. Agava alacha. He's saying it. The reason why he's saying this um, low, 
דלהלן, because he wants to introduce the next law. בעניין שניים שהוציאו. In the matter that two people take him in out. In other words, this is a law we already know. Why is repeating it, he's asking. מביא התנא תחילה דינו של אחד שהוציא. Therefore, he tells us in the beginning, what's the law when one person takes out from the private domain to the public domain, we already covered it in the beginning, all the way in the beginning. Now the question comes, הוציאו הוא שניים. Me and Arya decided to take a loaf together, out of the room, from the private domain to the public domain. אם שניים ביחד עקרו מרשות היחיד, two people together. So we already learned it a little bit. You remember the Balabite and the Ani, and we're saying it each that did a half. We said each one did a half, did it is patur. But over here, we know it's a little bit different. We are both going to go out to the private domain, pick up the bread together, and walk with it together to the public domain. So we each did the whole job. The whole job. But, but the problem is, did we do the whole job or did we do half a job? Because we, we both did it. You, you so so let's, that's, that, that's exactly the question. That's exactly the question. הוציאו שניים, אם שניים ביחד עקרו מרשות היחיד, if two people took him from the private domain, והם יחיו ברשות הרבים, and they placed it in the public domain, וכן אם אחד עשה את עקירת החפץ מרשות היחיד, ואחר עשה את ההנחה ברשות הרבים, או the case of the balabite and the poor person that we discussed in Mishnah א', כמו ששנינו בכלל בסרטנו א', א', that the one person gave it to the other person and one did the uprooting and the, the other one put the... Uh, he placed it. Pturim, they are both not obligated to bring the korban. Of course, they're not allowed to do it. Patur, aval asur. Shneemar, why? Because it says, ve'im nefesh achat techta beshgaga. The verse says, if one soul If one soul, it says... Here is two people. Oh, here's people, two, two people. If one soul is going to sin by mistake, Be'asota, and then it continues, Be'asota, achat mi mitzvot Hashem. When they do one, again, one of the, one of the work. It's one the person does one work. Here it's two people doing one work. Asher... אשר לא תעשינה, that God said it should not be done. ודרשו בעשותה, and they learned in her doing, העושה את כולה ולא העושה מקצתה. You need to do the whole job by yourself, and not with partnership with somebody else. So... אבל פה זה עושה תחתה בשגגה, זה לא שגגה? No, they didn't. They didn't know it was Shabbos. They forgot it was Shabbos, whatever the case was. Or they thought it wasn't רשות הרבים. שגגה, זה לא מייזי. Or in the Mezid, they have the death. You can use it. You can use it. Can you use Mezid and also the... Yeah, same thing, exactly. It's the same thing. Mezid, you cannot give him a death penalty now. But then you can bring the Torah and say, Ah, okay, very good. You can bring this... Very good. Yeah, but... Good, good. I don't know. Good question. Good question. I'm not quite sure. Good. לא יכול אחד להוציאו, but what happens if the, if it's a bread, I can take it by myself and you can take it by myself. But if it's a heavy couch, maybe Buzaglo can take it by himself, but me and you cannot take it by himself, right? So we need both of us to take it out. לא יכול אחד להוציאו, but if one of them is not able to take it out, מחמת כובד מסתור, because it's too heavy, והוציאו שניים, and then two people took it out, חייבים, then they're both obligated, שניהם. Why? שכל אחד מהם עשה את כל המלאכה שבידו לעשותה. Because each one of them did everything he could to do the מלאכה. In other words, if you do it by yourself, would you be able to take it out? No. If I do it by myself, would you be able to take it out? No. So if I and you took it out now, each one did all the melacha of our part. We did everything. Why not half the melacha? 
Be- I did half, you did half, and it became to be that we can lift it. I did half my half, you did half your half, so I took half a couch out, okay. and you took you half. half a couch out. When we're taking a bread... Not full melacha, half a melacha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 half a couch. We, Lama uh, no half melacha? Lama half couch? Be- be- because I'm not able to take the whole couch by myself. You see, in the bread, one take, uh, half a couch. You, you're looking at if on the bread, couch. I can take it all by myself. You can take it out by myself. So each one take yeah. half. Over here, each, each one, one is half. taking. You, you're not obligated for his half. He's telling you, you obligated for my <laughs> half. But in the bread, he says, who did it? Shalem. Yeah, exactly. The couch is what you would normally do on a normal day. Is two people would have to take it, so it's like the same. Yeah. Yeah. והציעו שניים חייבים, שכל אחד מהם עשה את כל המלאכה שלו ולא סתם. ורבי שמעון, רבי שמעון says no. רבי שמעון says, hey, what's going on over here? Just like before, it's not, but פותר. שלדעתו אפילו מלאכה שאין אחד יכול לעשות אותה, according to רבי שמעון, I don't care if, if you couldn't do it by yourself, since the מלאכה was done by two people and not by one person, ועשו השתיים, הרי הם פתוחים, therefore they are not obligated. This is a opinion of Rabbi Shimon. You can understand where he's coming from. He's asking your question. That's exactly what, what, what your question is. Was. But there is no halacha like Rabbi Shimon. The halacha is not like Rabbi Shimon, and we're still going to say we're going to consider it as each one took a half. Okay. So now come the question of the letters. You remember we, okay. the last one. Hamutzi ochlin. Somebody took out food, but he took out food less than the obligation that is going to bring a sin offering. It was less than the, the amount. Bekli, and he took it out in a vessel, because how he's going to cook? I mean, it's, it's pasta. He's not going, where he's going to put it? In his pocket? <laughs> yeah, he's not going to put it in his pocket. That's right. Yeah, Ziploc bag. The Ziploc bag, is he obligated on the Ziploc bag? That's the question. Shaninu shauchlim shiuram linyan otzao kegogoret. Food, we know what the measurement is. It is a dry fig. The measurement of a dry fig. Ve'im otzi adam pachot mi kegogoret, betoch kli. If a person took out less than a kogoret inside the vessel, patur afala kli. He's not obligated even on the vessel. Why? שלא התכוון להוציא את הכלי, because you ask him, you want the ziplock outside? No. No, I don't I want, want the food. I want the food outside. This is not machshavet again. Okay. He has no intention for, he doesn't care about the vessel. He cares about the food. אלא את האוכלים. וכיוון שפטור על האוכלים, and since now he's not obligated on the food, מפני שאין בהם כשיעור הוצאה, the food is not obligated, doesn't have the measurement. פטור אף עול הכלי, and the כלי and the vessel is subservient to the food. So you're not obligated at all. Shakli tfelalo, because the vessel is subservient to the food. Akli bateret selochlim. Now comes another example. What happens if a person takes a dead, a tachai bamita? He takes a, a live person on a bed. You know, there's a bed, he picks up the bed, and there's a live person on top of the bed. He takes the live person, he picks him up, and he moves into the... Et achai b'mita, even one person, it's a baby. Okay. Okay? Et achai b'mita, hamutzi adam chai b'mita, or two people, if, if one cannot do it, two people. Ho'il ve'eno chayav al hotsa'at ha'adam, since you're not obligated on carrying a person, in other words, on Shabbat, you're allowed to carry... Very good question. We're going to deal with that soon. You're allowed to, you're not allowed to, but you're not obligated from the Torah if I pick you on my shoulders and I carry you around. Why not? Mipnei shehachai nosei et atzmo. This is a concept in Shabbat because the living is carrying himself. That's what it says. And by the way, we might do it after the class. It's a whole complicated thing. What does it mean when you say the living is carrying himself? But we did, we did it soon. Shachai no said atzmo, ve'eino bichlal masa. A live person is carrying himself and is not considered to be 
lifting him. Why? We'll have to think about. Therefore, patur afalamita. So because he's taking the live person out, and he's not obligated on the live person, the mita become nullified. The only reason he's person. carrying the person, the person. he the doesn't p- care about the bed. Oh, patur al mita is not obligated on the whole bed. Shamitat felalo that the bed is subservient to the person. Betela etzel adam, beram bat im ha adam kafut if the person is tied up. Yeah. He's tied up. If you take it out, you are obligated. So the question is, excuse me, what's going on over here? What's the difference? The weight is the same. He can carry himself. What, what do you mean? Sure, but it's not exactly, if he's allowed, what, what's it? So we have to understand that. Yeah. But we do know that the concept, but only when he's not tied. That because somebody is dead is heavy? This is what they mean here? No, for sure not, because otherwise there's not, there's not going to be a difference between tied and not tied. Over here he tells you there's a difference between tied and not tied. It has nothing to do with dead or not dead. Okay. So, yeah. so that's right. Hamutz- so let's continue and try to figure it out. Hamutsi et amet bamita chayav. Somebody who takes the dead person in the bed, he's obligated. And over here it's complicated to, to understand why. Why? Alotsa'atamet. He's obligated because he took the dead person. And that's the problem. When a person, a dead person passed away in his house on Shabbat, and he's taking him out, he's taking him out of his house, does he want him to be outside? Who, the, guy, the dead man? No, the, 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 guy, the, the guy who's carrying him outside. Does he care if the guy is indoors? Does he actually need him outside? He, no. If the, the ambulance come to take him, of course he wants him outside. Does he want him outside? He doesn't want him outside. I'm talking about, forget ambulance, today, in, in those times. There's no ambulance. Because of okay. animals and things like that? No. He, the reason why he's taking him outside, he doesn't want him in his house. He says, that person, I don't want him in my house. Take him to the house. What do, you, what, what do I need this dead guy in my house? <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, it's melacha she'einot tzricha legufa. You don't care if the guy is inside or outside. But he cares. He doesn't want him in his house. Oh, so you don't, I mean, you don't, all you want is not to be inside. But you don't oh. want him outside. So right. that's called the melacha, a work that you don't need. You don't actually need it. You just don't want him to be here. It's not that you, de- you don't need him outside. So there's a machloket going to be here if you're going to be obligated or not. So what he says, chayav al otsa'at amet. You're obligated on taking out the dead person. Vechen, Hamotzi kezait menamet. Also, if you took up a portion of the dead person, vechezait menanevela, and there's a dead rat in your house, you don't want him outside. You just don't want a dead rat in your house. Uke adasham in asheretz, and you a little bit of uh, I don't know a snake, a cockroach. Chayav, you're obligated in all these things. Ho'il ve kezait u'shiur letuma bemet u'benevelav. As long as you have the measurement of tuma. In a dead person or in a dead animal, and a lentil is the measurement of uh, def- defilement for a mouse. These measurements make it important. Also, when you take it out on Shabbat, because when you take them out, it says, you are gaining something. What are you gaining? That your house and your people are now not going to become impure. So there is something you're gaining. Rabbi Shimon is going to say, he's poter. He says, you're not obligated in all these cases. Not the dead person, not the mouse, not nothing. Why? Why? Because you don't need the, those people, the things outside. There's a machloket. No, it's good, nothing. It's, no. it's a different concept. Yeah, um, you don't need the melacha itself. You don't need the melacha. You don't. In other words, you, you ask the guy, do you need the mouse outside? No, I don't care if the mouse. I just don't want it here. 
So you don't need the mouth that you're doing something that you don't need it. You just don't want to hear. Yeah, I don't, that's you right. Don't care where. You're just exactly. Don't I don't need it at all. I, should, for me, it's garbage. Just take it out of here. So he's saying, if there's such a case, there's a machloket between Rabbi Shimon and the Chachamim. The Chachamim says you are obligated if you take out, even if you don't need it outside. And Rabbi Shimon says you're not obligated. He doesn't take out the dead person because he needs him in the public domain. He only takes it out because he wants the house to be removed from the dead person. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon holds he says, if you do a job that you don't need the main part of the job, you're not obligated. Beram, Tanakama Sover, but our first guy, he holds, Shafilu Melacha, Shenatzicha Legufa, Chavim Alea, that even if you do a work that you don't need it, you still are obligated. Vechen Posek Rambam, the Rambam also holds that way. That means that if you, even if you don't need the, jo- the job, you still are obligated. As the Rambam says, Kol Aosem Melacha Bishabad, he says, if a person does any kind of work on Shabbat, even though he doesn't need it, he doesn't need the dead person outside, Chayav Aleha is obligated. Ve'yesh sovrim, and there are those who hold, Sh'alacha k'Rabi Shimon, that the halacha is like Rabbi Shimon, and by the way, this machloket comes all the way to our days. To our days, there's a whole debate about this. Just to give us some information about this Chay Noset Atzmo, Okay. It's, by the way, this Chaim Noset Tzmo, there's books and books are written about it and are tr- trying to discuss it. So, if you, le- if you learn it on the very basis level, some people are trying to say that the reason Chaim Noset Tzmo because he's alive. Because the person is alive, and the person is alive is lighter than a dead person. Right. That's how some people say, but that's, that's, it's, that's nonsense. It's not, it's, true. it's not true. Not true. You can actually measure it. You know? And if, even if it is a love, it's nothing. But they say, I don't care if it's nothing. If the chayno set at small, if the live person you're saying is carrying himself, then how many people are carrying the live person outside? None. Two. Or three. In other, let's say now. it's two, it's a baby. Right. Since it's a baby, he's helping you carrying it himself. It's like two people are carrying him outside and therefore it's pato. That's what some people say. Because they join him in the care. That's right. He's joining him in the poem. But then the kafut. Kafut cannot. Ju- oh, how, so so the kafut should also be. So that cannot be the reason. Right. Right. So that cannot be the reason. Kafut? Tied up. Ah, okay. Tied up. So it says, so if you're saying, and also there's another problem. If you remember the famous story, famous, famous story, we, we actually, you know the story. Rabbi Shimon, do you remember when the Romans um, were doing the Matzor on Yerushalayim? Okay. And Rabbi Shimon, and um, the Biryonim, the guys, burnt all the food. All the food. And yeah. they, Rabbi Shimon wanted to go out to talk to the general. So they told, so the okay. Rosh Biryonim, Rosh Biryonim told him, act like you're dead. We're going to take you out in a coffin and make sure that only your students are going to be the one who's carrying you. So they won't know that you are a- alive or dead. Because if they're, in other words, if regular people are going to carry you, they're going to think that you're alive. So he says, what do you mean? Regular people know the weight of Rabbi Shimon. They know how much he weighs and you have 10 people carrying. How would they know? So it says, if you ever, you were in the army, so you probably know it. Yeah. You never in the army. You know Masa Alunkot in the army when you carry yeah. dead people in an Alunka? Is there a difference if the guy on the Alunka is dead or me'ulaf or fainted right. or not? It's much harder when he's me'ulaf. Why? Why is it harder? It's the same weight. I don't know. It doesn't it's help. Move. It doesn't oh, help. because doesn't when it moves, he it adjusts. Okay. The guy inside, Adjust whether it. he likes it or not, you you tilting one way, okay. you adjust. Okay, so in other words, 
this is uh, some of the people who are trying to explain. Why is carrying a live person not carrying the whole thing? Let's because see since he adjusts, you can see he's not like dead weight. So therefore, he's helping you in the carrying. Mm -hmm. Some people trying to say that. But it, again, it has a lot of uh, things. Just, this is just to bring it all together.